This week, the planet mechanics are battling to conjure up electricity out of thin air. They must make England's most remote youth hostel completely energy self-sufficient. But with the forces of nature raging against them and two very different angles of attack, <laughs> will our eco-warriors get the upper hand? Oh. Or be knocked out in the first round? Oh, I don't like it. I love doing these in the wet. Dick Strawbridge is an ex-army officer turned eco-warrior. Oh. Jim Stansfield is an inventor with a wild green streak. Whoa. Two men on a mission to fix the world. Whoa. One mechanical solution at a time. Oh. Together, they are the Planet Mechanics. The English Lake District, immortalized in verse by William Wordsworth. But the poet simply wouldn't recognize broad swathes of his beloved fells if he walked them today. Over the past hundred years, vast forests of non-native conifers have been planted. Here in Ennerdale, there's a radical project underway to rip out the rows of regimented pines and restore this valley to its natural glory. Lovers of the lakes are delighted, but there is one unfortunate casualty. England's most isolated youth hostel relies on this run-down forestry road to bring in all its power supplies. But once the forest goes, the service road will be abandoned. And to survive, Blacksail Hostel must generate its own power. That's where the Planet Mechanics come in. They're heading up to Ennerdale Valley to see what can be done. Can Dick and Jem make Blacksail Hut energy self-sufficient and save it for the thousands of hikers it serves each year? They've got a generator for electricity, and they have to have all their fuel delivered from the generator down this road. But this road's going. The whole idea is that Ennerdale goes back to nature. And you know, so people walking along here, the road goes, there is no way of getting stuff in. That means they have to really survive completely self-sufficiently. I think we've put ourselves in quite a tricky position telling these guys that we're going to come up with a solution for them yeah. that's going to power their hostel. They're taking their fateful old mobile workshop. Normally happy as cruising down hills, it's struggling on the steep road up to Blacksail. After steadily climbing the 6.4 kilometers along the already deteriorating forestry road, Dick and Jem finally get their first glimpse of the hostel. This is remote, mate. I know, but then <laughs> there's nobody to actually get anything from. We don't have it in the truck. We just don't have it. For the next few days, they'll be working with hostel manager Tony Hume. Where do you get your services at the moment? Like water, electricity, gas? Right, the water is here. We have water supply. But everything else has to be brought in uh, on the forest road. And if the road stops being maintained, it could get washed away any time, couldn't Tomorrow. it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> it is that serious. Well, you know, we get heavy rain, it could wash out the gully. So, what happens to the youth hostel? No power at all, no cooking facility, no heating. And the question has to be asked whether you have a hostel here at all. What happens to your job if this goes? <laughs> um, my job would change. See, my empathy for walkers is one thing, but for <laughs> people's jobs, I am bothered. I like you. <laughs> I'd like you to keep your job. Excellent. In a nutshell, the road goes, that means you end up with no electricity, no heating. Yeah. That's not exactly a great thing right. to advertise. But before Dick and Jem can even begin to start figuring out how to rescue Black Sail and Tony's job, lights and sockets, they need to carry out an energy audit to figure out exactly how much power the hostel is currently using. Two radiators, a tiny room. It's on. It's on. <laughs> What is it? August. Middle of August. <laughs> and it's on. It says it on your watch, does it? <laughs> I have to check. <laughs> the generator's down this end somewhere. 4,000, that's a four kilowatt generator, I guess. Yep. 
And the solar panels are around here somewhere, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And, yeah. But tucked around the back of the hostel, there's a nasty surprise in store. 15 gas bottles! These lot must be directly for heating, water heating, that kind of thing. That's obviously where the most of their energy goes. These gas bottles are black cells dirty and not so little energy secret. And they're giving Dick and Jem a bigger headache than they'd bargained for. With just three solar panels generating a tiny amount of power, the hostel relies primarily on heavy gas cylinders to supply heating, cooking, fuel and electricity. And when the road goes, the gas goes. OK, isn't that place up there called Windy Gap? Yeah. Which makes me think there's got to be wind. It doesn't get that nickname ironically. Yeah. So in which case, what about a wind turbine? I mean, a wind turbine, you get a lot of power out of those. Mm. OK, so that's a possibility. What about solar? 